Good evening and welcome to Maundy Thursday worship here at Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Wells, Minnesota. The worship service where we remember the evening that Jesus spent with his disciples sharing the Last Supper, washing their feet. Please know that we will worship again tomorrow evening, 6.15 p.m. for Good Friday that will be broadcast here on Facebook Live and also on live stream on the website goodshepherdwells.org. Easter Sunday, we will broadcast our worship at 9 a.m. as well. On Easter Sunday morning, we will celebrate Holy Communion together. You can prepare by having crackers or bread ready as well as juice or wine. Please also prepare by having your Bible open to 1 Corinthians in the New Testament. So that will be for Easter morning worship, 9 a.m., Holy Communion celebration in the midst of our Easter festive celebration. Thank you tonight to our wonderful worship team. Playing the piano this evening is Connie Stenzel. Singing, Sandy Hartman, McKenna Erickson, John Melby. Uh, taping technician tonight is Connor Ellert and the microphone coordinator. She's been assisting every worship service is Andy Grosskreutz. So thank you all for, for everything that helps us be prepared for worship. We continue now with the song. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, you put all power and authority into the hands of your Son, Jesus. Jesus, who washed the feet of his beloved in humble service. Jesus, who teaches us to love one another as Christ has loved us. Jesus, who reaches out to us in love so that everyone will know that we are his disciples. Inspire us now to love and serve as Jesus first did. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. A reading from Psalm 103. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always accuse, nor will he keep his anger forever. 
He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our brokenness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his steadfast love towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far the Lord removes our sins from us. And now a reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 13. John writes, Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come, his hour to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it in the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, Jesus got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I'm doing, but, but later, later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. And Jesus said, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet, but, but also my hands and my head as well. And Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. You are clean, though not all of you. For he knew that Peter was going to betray him. And for this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After Jesus washed their feet, he put his robe back on and had returned to the table. And he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher, you call me Lord, and, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and your teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set for you an example, that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, Servants are not greater than their master, nor messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Jesus said, little children, I'm with you only a little longer. You look for me. And as I said to the others, now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment. Love one another. Just as I have loved you, you should also love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Here ends our reading. I grew up thinking for many, many years that this day was called Monday, Thursday. That never made sense. Then later I learned that it is called Maundy Thursday, which also doesn't make much sense until you realize that the name of the day comes from a Latin word, mandatum which means command or order. When he was in Jerusalem, Jesus gathered his friends for a meal, not uncommon. We often call it, though, the Last Supper, for that's what it was, the Last Supper he enjoyed with his friends. During that meal, Jesus got up from the table and he tied a towel around his waist and he kneeled down with a basin full of water, and to their surprise, their shock, he washed the feet of his disciples. 
And then he said that he gives us all a new mandatum, a new commandment, love, he said, love. He commanded his followers to love as he loved. This is how others will know that we are his disciples if we have this love for one another. So on Monday, Thursday, we commemorate that night when Jesus established the meal, Holy Communion, where we received the body and blood fed and forgiven. We remember the washing of the feet where Jesus showed us what love looks like. And then he gave us the command to love as he loves. Now Jesus didn't just kneel over and splash a little water around on their grimy, calloused feet. Jesus touched them. He touched them. He had skin-to-skin -skin contact. He touched them. And touch is such a central part of who we are as humans. In childbirth centers, in hospitals, they've realized that touch is so essential that they try to make certain that in the first minutes after the birth, a newborn gets skin-to-skin -skin contact right away with their parents. If possible, it happened with the birth of my daughter. When this newborn baby is born, it is immediately placed right up on the chest of the mother so that skin-to-skin -skin touch can happen immediately. The benefits of touch are staggering because we come into this world needing touch, and just as we come into this world needing touch, we leave the world needing touch as well. And I have learned as a pastor just how tender it is to sit with our elders and hold a hand as we visit, as we pray. And now here we are, and we're commanded not to touch. No touching in the midst of this pandemic. The sanctuary is empty. We have a new understanding that touch, or even close distance to somebody, might be unhealthy or even deadly. A month ago, when the word was spreading that this was bad and going to get worse, the first thing we did was stop the practice of having any physical contact during the passing of the peace. No shaking of hands, nothing, no hugs, nothing. And soon after that, very quickly after it came the government orders to stay six feet away from one another. No physical closeness. We had to keep distance. And soon after that, quickly then came the orders to stay at home and stay away from other people. And in the midst of an order to have physical distance, to have no touch, we come to Monday, Thursday. And we read this story and we remember that Jesus washed their feet. He touched them intimately. And he said, love as I have loved you. But at this time, we have to keep our distance knows if it will ever be safe to shake hands with other people again? Who knows if we will ever hug someone whom we don't live with? But back to the story, we see that Jesus asks us to be humble in our service to others. And at this time, humble service looks so different. Yes, Jesus touched lovingly the feet of the disciples, as a part of what a relationship is. Jesus set that example for us. But today, of course, loving, humble servanthood looks like staying home to stop the spread of a dangerous and deadly disease that can overwhelm our medical system. Today, loving and humble servanthood looks like making phone calls to neighbors to check on their needs. Loving servanthood looks like the gentle care to our families and friends and neighbors knowing that we are all overwhelmed by this. Humble service looks so different at this time. 
We still need touch. Touch is powerful. And I hope that one day we never take for granted closeness with someone else or the opportunity to worship in a room full of others or the chance to go to school. I hope we don't take that for granted ever again. I hope we never take for granted a simple handshake. When this is over, I hope that we appreciate the power of touch, realizing that the world will always be different, but hopefully we will be a kinder people who live out what true humble servanthood of Jesus looks like. Thanks be to God. Amen. the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Good Monday, Thursday evening. I'm John Melby. I invite you to continue to support the ministry of Good Shepherd Lutheran Church. Our offering gifts stand as hopefulness that one day soon we will be able to worship here together in the Good Shepherd Sanctuary. You are able to make a donation by visiting the Good Shepherd website. The address is goodshepherdwells.org. On the right side of the home page, click on giving and then online giving. You can also put your offering in the mail and send it to the church at 291 First Street Southwest, Wells, Minnesota, 56097. Thank you for your faithful support of Good Shepherd, our building, and our ministry. Let us pray for all God's children in Christ Jesus. 
and for all people according to their needs. Loving God, Jesus showed us how to live by stooping to wash the disciples' feet. Teach us how to humbly serve our neighbors in need and love one another as you have loved us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, be present with those who have contracted the coronavirus, those who are quarantined, those stranded away from home, those who have lost their jobs, and those who are feeling alone. Console all who feel lost or empty. Bring them hope in their distress. Bring reassurance and support to all health professionals and medical researchers as they address the pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Compassionate God, bring healing and wholeness to those who are suffering. Bring strength to all who are recuperating. Guide doctors, nurses, caregivers, and all who work countless hours to care for those in need. Bring comfort and healing to all who are sick. We pray for Bebo Getcho, and we pray for the family and friends of Shirley Salzman. May they know the consolation of your love and the hope of the resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, make us bold witnesses to your love as we practice social distancing and find creative ways to reach out to others in need. Give all who sit in darkness the strength they need to face the day with confidence, confidence in your steadfast love. As we move through our days, bring each one of us a stillness in our soul. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction. We are called to, to go into the world to love as Christ loved. Even in our darkest hour, remember who you are, a beloved child of God. Even in our darkest hour, remember that Christ is always with us. As Jesus gathered with his loved ones and washed their feet, we are taught how to love. 
be in the world this night and love in the name of Jesus, who loves us to the end. It begins and ends with love. Amen.